Well, good morning. What a beautiful day, huh? And a very special day. We welcome Sophia, Josephine, Charles, and Abigail, who will be baptized today. We welcome Lila, who will make her first communion. And today, today is the first Sunday after Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. I'm not going to try and explain it, but we have a very nice brochure in the back at the entrance, a little pamphlet. So if you want to see more about it, grab one, take it home, let it guide you. It's a beautiful document. But listen to these words from the diary of St. Faustina. My daughter, tell the whole world about my mercy. A mercy so great that no man or angel will be able to fathom it. What a great message for those of us who are not perfect. God's mercy, God's love and compassion and forgiveness are beyond our comprehension. In our readings today, they speak of mercy and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Our gospel reading opens with the disciples hiding behind locked doors, hiding from the Jews and the Romans. It's Sunday evening. They're hiding in the same room where only a few days earlier they had celebrated the Passover with Jesus. It's only been a week since the prophet from Nazareth entered Jerusalem. And on that day, the crowds cheered him. Actually, they mobbed him like a rock star or some famous celebrity. And then everything changed. He was declared a criminal, given a mockery of a trial, sentenced to die on the cross. The man that they believed was the Messiah, the Son of God, had been crucified and was dead. They were hiding, they were afraid. And to add to that confusion, the body of Jesus was no longer in the tomb. And that crazy woman, Mary Magdalene, was running around claiming that she had talked to Jesus. They had no idea what was going on. They couldn't understand, but they were afraid. And then, in that very same room, with the doors locked, Jesus appears and says, peace be with you. Now let's fast forward from that upper room to the first reading in the Acts of the Apostles. We find these same disciples. They've been completely transformed. Those who were terrified of everything are now out and about preaching the word of God, teaching, breaking the bread, performing great wonders, great signs, healing the sick. Great numbers of people are now becoming Christians, followers of Jesus. So what happened? How were they transformed from this bunch of hiding, frightened disciples into the leaders of a Christian community that still exists 2,000 years later? Was the source Divine mercy? So let's go back to that gospel reading for a moment. Just picture the scene. Jesus enters the locked room where the disciples are hiding. The same men he deeply loved, the same men who only a few days earlier had denied him and deserted him. In this joy-filled moment, just imagine the apostles waiting for Jesus to speak. Would he revile them for their cowardly act of abandonment? Would he single out Peter for his three denials? Would he put them all on probation? No. He spoke only words of comfort, peace, love, compassion. He granted them divine mercy. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. 
We too have been empowered by the same Holy Spirit, the one that transformed the apostles in that locked room. That night Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And today he says it to each one of us. He says it to all of us. I send you. He says it to Sophia. He says it to Josephine. He says it to Charles and Abigail and to Lila. Like Jesus' disciples, you and I are not perfect, but through the mercy of God, we need not be afraid. The gospel teaches us that the highest forms of mercy can lead to the greatest joy. So grant mercy freely and make our resurrected God visible to all through your mercy. Please like, subscribe, or comment below.